Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in this series on redesigning a mobile app. In this video, we'll go ahead and redesign the category details screen. This is basically the details of the category. So a super quick recap. Uh, this is what we did in the last video. We basically have the list of all the categories on this screen. And I spoke about how we solved many problems and how we catered to a lot of uh, user stories over here. And uh, this is the screen that we came up with. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking these two user stories, which actually make sense um, for this video. And it actually didn't make a lot of sense for the previous video because these two user stories were regarding the information related to a specific category, but these two were at, uh, at a global level. Uh, but nevertheless, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna explain all of that once again, right? So let's go ahead and look at how the screen looks like today. So basically, uh, we have the screen that we just saw. And when you tap on one of the categories, let's say I'm choosing investment. And I, one of the things to remember here is that we're selecting the entire year. So this is the all time 2023. But at the moment I tap on this, what I get is this screen, right? Now this screen is investments, but it shows you for the current month of December, right? So what I'm expecting to see is a breakdown of 4,50,000 rupees for the entire year. But what I now end up seeing is that I spent 1 lakh in the month of December and I have to scroll through all of this to find where are the other places that I made up the expenses. Now here down below, you can see for 1 lakh, you have the breakdown. So this is 50,000 on 4th of December. And I made two, um, I invested two times in Zeroda um, in the month of 4th, uh, 4th of December, right? So this is giving me information for that particular month. But I actually want to see all the transactions that are making up for lakh 50,000 and I have to scroll, find the specific months and it's, it's so much of unnecessary effort, right? Now, another thing here is that it says 100% of the total spending in December has been spent on investments, 57% less than the previous month, right? Now, I understand that this information is important. So basically it's showing the trend. So 50% less than the previous month and also how much is the total spending for that month. Now, the problem I have here with this is that this shouldn't be explained with three lines of text. This should be as simple and quick to understand because if you're explaining your designs with text, then that's essentially not good design. You should not have to have large sentences explaining something, right? So 100% of total savings in December, this is something that could be easily done through design. Showing 50% less than the previous month, this could be easily done through design. And explaining that in three lines of text, nobody's going to read all of this text, right? And this has to be, you know, designed in a way where without reading sentences, I should be able to understand the information, right? Now, coming to the user stories. Now, these two user stories were things that I had repeated in the previous video, but uh, it made more sense over here. So let's understand, right? So where did I even spend so much money? And actually this was about uh, food and beverages. Uh, so I'm going to reach, I'm going to change this and I'm going to say, it looks like I spent uh, a lot of, oops, let's try that again, a lot of money on uh, food and drinks. All right. Um, I made sure to cut down on food delivery or was it because of more groceries that I brought now that I have a roommate, right? So basically um, one level above. So basically on this particular screen, we would see that there was a lot of money spent on food and drinks. And now we want to get a granular level information, which was basically that, hey, I didn't actually spend so much on food delivery or was it because I bought a lot of uh, groceries because I have a roommate, right? How do I get this information, right? The second thing is, I think I have been shopping more ever since my salary increased four months ago. Have I been shopping this much? Now this again sort of pertains to this screen to be very honest, but I think if we want granular level information, very similar to this. So maybe I want to see um, what have I been shopping the most in which categories, electronics, you know, cosmetics, um, I don't know, furniture could be whatever it is, right? So sort of, I could get this information here as well, right? So both of these to an extent uh, makes a lot of sense in terms of user stories, right? Cool. So there are a lot of problems over here and let's look at this, right? So there is no way for me to figure out. Now, of course, we are looking at investments over here and here we're looking at food and drinks, but just assume that this screen is about food and drinks. Let's just, let's just assume that's the case, right? I would only see information over here and there is no way to figure out how much did I actually spend on food delivery? How much did I spend on groceries? I can only get the total of how much as food and drinks in total. But the breakdown of food and drinks, which is basically food delivery and groceries, 
There is no way to get that information over here. There is absolutely no way to get that information over here, right? I only see transactions at a monthly level, but I don't want to see it at a monthly level. I want to see it at a yearly level. Now, of course, most cases we will be wanting to look at it at a monthly level. But if I were to look at it at an yearly level, there is no way for me to do it, right? And even if I am looking for the month of December, let's say I am looking for the month of December, there's no way from, I have to sit down and manually look at which is food delivery, which is not food delivery, which is groceries, which is this, which is that, right? So it's not really helping me make any sort of decisions to be honest, right? So let's go ahead and see how I went ahead redesigning this. Now, the first thing that I did was, the answer was pretty straightforward. I took the total value, which was basically for that period, right? So for example, if I, if this was a yearly period, so I would see the total would be for like 50,000 and here also the value would be for like 50,000. But again, don't pay attention to the numbers, just pay attention to the concept, right? So if this screen was about monthly, then this screen would be about monthly information. If this screen was for an, you know, yearly period uh, or a custom period, then this screen would be appropriately for the custom period, right? So what I did was the first thing I think I did was added tabs, okay? So now I added sorting by date, sorting by category or sorting by merchant. What this basically means is now I can look at things at a chronological order. So the date, so 14 September, 2nd September, whatever. And I could see all the transactions in one scroll. I don't have to swipe hundred times. All right. I could see that all over here. Now, and if I tapped on category, for example, then I would have fixed up, let's say in investments, you have multiple categories, right? So investment is the main category. And under that, let's say you have fixed deposit, you have mutual funds, you have crypto, you have whatever it is, right? So if there is no category added, so basically if we come over here, you can see that um, investment is the global category, which is the same thing as this. And as you can see, this is being repeated. So, you know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but this specific transaction could be for mutual funds. This specific transactions could be for cryptocurrency. All right. Or it could be for anything else. Right. So those subcategories, I could see that over here. So fixed deposit, I have this. If there are no categories, I would see, see this. And this would force me to go and add a category uh, by going to the transaction details and adding a category so that I could see it over here. And if I want to see to whom did I pay so much, I could even see that. So if I click on merchant, I could see, okay, to Zeroda, I paid this much money for, you know, and this one is uncategorized. But if there's an other uh, place, let's say Upstocks or any other platform that I use to invest or maybe even Wealth, I would see that merchant as well, right? So this is giving me so much granular control on getting the total values, right? Now, there are a couple of things missing over here. For example, uh, how much did I spend on Zeroda? I would have to add that value over here. Um, I, so I think that was over here, but I guess I just missed adding it over here, but doesn't matter because I was iterating. So you would have the total over here um, and here as well. And I would see the entire thing. Now, the only problem with this is that I can't see the trend of it, right? Now here they have a trend, but this trend is done in this way, right? And unfortunately I, I can't find the trend over here because if I want to come over here and say, I think I've been shopping, let's say in electronics ever since my salary increased four months ago, yes or no, right? I can't, I can't do that trend analysis over here because, you know, I can't swipe anywhere or change anything, right? That's the thing. So what I did was I came up with this concept, all right, which is very similar to what we had before, which was basically this screen. It looked very similar to this screen. So when I tap on investments, the screen would look pretty much the same. All right. And I added this ability to switch between dates, category and merchant inside over here on filter. My design decision, my reasoning for that was that maybe people don't use these three options a lot. So maybe it makes sense to hide it inside a menu like this. All right. Um, or basically the icon on the top, right? So, but if people use this a lot, we can probably bring it out front. That was my initial choice. And for November, 2023, this is the total. So this was my total expenses for the entire year or Let's say in this case, this is the total expenses for number 2023. And this one is in comparison to that, how much um, it actually is. Now, I don't have the percentage value on this screen. So basically, out of all my expenses, how much percentage was investments a part of that we, have, we could anyway find it over here, right? We anyway have the percentage value over here. So I would know that this value uh, of 12% is basically 12% of the entire expenses for that time period, right? So I didn't find it to be a necessity to show that information over here, but the trend obviously makes sense, right? So 16% increase compared to the previous month. We're following the same pattern that we saw in the previous video, all right? And then I have a list of all the transactions for that specific time period, which means if I come over here and let's say this screen was about for the entire year, 
all right? And I clicked on investments. I would then see for the entire year of 2023 and all the transactions for 2023 with a monthly summary, right? Now, because this is for November 2023, because we're looking at a monthly level, we want to break that down at a, you know, on a specific day level, right? So on November 14, this is the total November 2nd, this is the total, right? But if I had 2023 as the year, then each of these would probably for the entire month. So we would have October, this much we spent, November, this much we spent, you know, September, this much we spent, right? So this screen also would automatically change depending on whether this was 2023 or this was November 2023, right? So that's a very big difference. Now, one of the problems I had here was that with this design, it looked like this is sort of like a progress bar, which means I sort of completed, you know, let's say like 15% of the entire thing. It sort of felt like a budget, right? So I didn't want it to sort of overlap. And so what I finalized was on this design where we follow the same pattern as where we had these sections. So this is now feels like a part of the entire investments uh, or basically the entire expenses for November 2023, right? And then I actually brought out the date category and merchant um, things as well. So now it's easy for me to categorize over here. So now if we go ahead and compare, we can visually see how much was the total spending in comparison to the entire set of expenses for let's say a particular month. Now we don't have the actual number. We would get the number on the previous screen or actually, you know what? Let me come and show it over here. So here I saw that the investment was 16%. So this is basically 16%, right? So we don't need the 16% number over here on this screen. We already have that over here. Um, so the user already has that information. So it doesn't make sense to show it over here. But then here we show the, the trend, uh, which is a 4%, which is basically comparing to the previous month, right? And then I can also sort and filter, not filter, basically I can sort them based on the specific type, which is basically looking at it by date, looking at it by category and looking at it by merchant, right? Now, another thing that I added over here was the time period as well, because on this screen, this is the overview screen, right? This is all the expenses for the particular period. And this would be uh, for the month of, let's say November, I spent this much money. Um, and when I click on this, I come over here and that time period also would be carry forward, right? So from November, I would go to November. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted to see investments for a specific time period, right? I could actually do that on this screen, right? Now, because if I come over here and I want to see for, let's say, January 2022, I have to scroll all the way to the left and find it. And if I want to choose a specific time period, right? Let's say for the first two weeks of a specific month, there is no way for me to do that. But with this option, I can choose any specific custom time period and I can come down here to investments and look at it specifically, right? Here as well, the total expenses or total incomes, I can choose a specific time period. It is so simple and easy to understand over here. So now if we were to come ahead and get these personas, so if I'm gonna copy these personas and paste them and let's see if we can find that information, right? So it says, it looks like I spent a lot of money on food and drinks. So let's say this screen is about food and drinks. I made sure to cut down on food delivery or was it because of the groceries? Now, to get this information, all I have to do is click on category and then I would get to see the total food and drinks, how much did I spend? Oh, sorry, not food and drinks. Food delivery, how much did I spend? Groceries, how much did I spend? Super quick to get that information right here and we would have obviously the totals over here. So we would have a section called as categories. I think very similar to this one. So under categories, we would have, this would be basically food delivery and then this category would be um, groceries, right? And then we would have that categorization, we would have the total on top and it's super easy to get that information that I need, right? But with a design like this, it's almost impossible. I think it is impossible, not even almost impossible to get that information, right? Now coming to this user story, which is about shopping, right? I can, if this, let's say is the top level, which is shopping, I can quickly swipe through these and I can see, okay, for November, I spend this much. Okay, for, you know, September, I spend this much. Oh, for October, I spend this much. We're looking at this at a category level. Here, we're looking at it at an expense level, right? And all the features get carried forward. It is super easy to make decisions. It is very intuitive for the user. We are carry forwarding the patterns as well, right? So this design is a lot more useful to users when compared to this design, right? And I think I actually have to add this icon here. I think I missed that icon. Um, so if I come over here, I can add the right icon and I can change this to the calendar. So let me go ahead and add the calendar icon. Yep, 
there we go right so i can choose a custom time period over here um i can choose a custom time period over here and then clicking on investments takes me to the screen right super simple and super straightforward so i hope that made a lot of sense so that's pretty much it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys really enjoyed it if you did let me know in the comment sections down below make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing awesome content i'll see you guys in the next video so then take care and bye bye